All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us for this session. Pioneer Power Solutions, symbol PPSI. Um, we'll skip right this. Uh, basically, we're comprised of two businesses today. Uh, we we uh, manufacture power equipment, specialty electrical equipment for fixed infrastructure, and I'll, I'll detail that and drill down with that a little bit. And then we have our mobile charging business, mobile high-capacity uh, electric vehicle, mostly for trucks and buses today type of business. Um, these are both new solutions. Um, the, both these markets, uh, when it comes to the fixed infrastructure, it's mostly related to uh, charging infrastructure, distributed generation. Anytime uh, somebody is using more than one power source, that's when our e-block power, uh, power module shines. And the e-boost is pretty self-explanatory, and you'll see with the pictures, um, is, a, is, a, uh, is several platforms of mobile charging um, units. Um, most of our customers are diversified blue chip type customers. We've been in electrical equipment business for many, many years. The short story is three and a half years ago, we were a traditional uh, manufacturer of specialty electrical equipment. We sold the majority of our business, the assets, uh, which was mostly a tran two transformer businesses. We sold them to a private equity group, got $67 million in cash and notes, um, paid off all our debt, retooled the business over the next two years to really attack um, with the skills and competencies that we had, um, these two uh, exciting markets. Um, that's a picture of our 2022 uh, 2022 revenue, 27 million up almost 50% over 2021. Uh, the first big order that set 2022 uh, off for us was a $12 million order for our e-block business, which was received in December of 2021 for one of the nation's largest mer mass merchandisers. Um, they are adding, just we'll see pictures of it, but in their case, they're adding a redundant system uh, Four, they piloted with 63 stores. Uh, they take two natural gas, two large 400 kilowatt natural gas engines. Um, th they continue to get their power from the grid. Uh, these are oversized uh, for their particular store. And our product, eBlock, sits in between all of that. It acts both as, or more than both, but as the, the transfer scheme, uh, the traffic cop as to where the sequence of operations is, where they want to go, the power to go, at what time, uh, and under what uh, what parameters and what circumstances, and also protects and controls uh, all the power that's going in and out uh, of the facility. That's the e-block, and that business continues to grow. Um, we projected out guidance for this year, overall revenue, of um, I think it's 42 to 46 million. The majority of that is the growth of the e-block uh, product. Mobility business um, is uh, engine generators. That's how we started servicing engine generators. We then came up with what we call the e-boost product. We'll see if we have a picture in a minute, but uh, either way, that's the balance of the revenue. That's a product that uh, we came up with the idea for it in June of 2021. We launched the first prototype in November of 2021. 2022, we probably sold, I don't know, about a million and a half, $2 million worth of units. And we're looking for uh, double that this year and really double that uh, the year after. Uh, quick highlights, uh, Q4 for 2022, our revenue was up 172% over Q4 of 2021. Um, Backlog has uh, expanded enormously. It's at 37.2 million at the end of the year. It's more now. Uh, it's a record for us since, uh, and every quarter has become a record really since we, uh, since we sold the transformer business uh, over three and a half years ago. Um, had 10, 10 cents of uh, EPS, first profitable quarter that we had, significantly profitable uh, since we sold the transformer business as we finally reached what I believe is the scale and mix of product uh, to continue to achieve profitability. And we've, uh, we at the end of the year or, or at the time of our K, we issued guidance that we expect to be a positive EPS for the entire 
2023, not just for the fourth quarter like we did last year. That's the eBoost product. Um, you see on the first picture, that's the original one we call the GOAT generator on a truck. That's a, uh, that's a propane-based generator with a high-capacity charger in a small truck, uh, and that is the ultimate in, uh, in mobility. Uh, the larger, that what, what turned out to be the faster-moving, more, uh, more dynamic uh, version of it is what you see in the second picture, uh, charging a school bus. That's a skid mount system. It's actually a very small system, 30 kilowatts. It's a propane generator with the tanks. You can't see them behind the propane tanks. Uh, married and integrated and controlled um, with our equipment. Um, and that's doing high capacity charging to an IC bus, which is uh, a division of uh, Navistar. I don't have to, and I don't guess I don't have to belabor uh, the lack of infrastructure, companies, people, fleets, government are adopting uh, and adapting with, uh, with electric vehicles, trucks, buses, passenger vehicles, um, not sufficient infrastructure. To, to uh, for many, especially the truck and bus manufacturers, as opposed to a passenger vehicle, these are businesses, they're in the business of moving people or moving packages and parcel, uh, and they're taking delivery, have taken delivery and continue to take delivery of many, many units. They need to be able to charge them quickly. They need be, to be able to charge them in a very flexible basis. Uh, they don't have time to wait. They're also hesitant to spend the money to bust up their parking lots, to spend the money on civil and mechanical work um, when they may not be needed. And we are lucky enough to have jumped into this gap um, and to say that the eBoost business is dynamic, it, it you know, undersells uh, the exponential rate that, uh, that it has been growing. Um, here's some more pictures of eBoost. Again, that's, uh, that's the Navistar unit in the first picture for, for primarily for, they're using it there for a truck, but it's primarily they use it for buses. Uh, the second picture is a trailer mounted version. The most expensive one that we built to date, just under a million dollars, uh, was sold to a casino, uh, a fancy casino in the Midwest where they're uh, using it for an application that I wouldn't have thought of, but essentially they're offering uh, anybody that comes with an electric vehicle, a free charge uh, while you're in the casino, regardless of how long or how, uh, how little you stay in the casino, their theory was that uh, they don't want to spend the money to, uh, again, break up their parking lot, decide where they can move a charger, where they can't. This way, that's it. The valet people have your key and uh, they'll charge any vehicle. They'll, see, they'll drive it around. They'll charge any vehicle that happens to be electric. More use cases, you can see the self-explanatory. Um, I've said this many times at different events that in November of 2021, when we launched eBoost, if I would, boom, uh, together with Gio Marikin, the gentleman that runs the business day to day, and we would have spent three hours coming up with every possible use case um, and every application, uh, we wouldn't have hit 50% of the uh, of the applications that we're being uh, tasked to quote and to come up with solutions for. Um, sporting events, trade shows, emergency is obvious, uh, you know, is one that we could think of. Gridlocked areas, people that don't want to, their apartment buildings and things like that, that again, don't want to or don't have the time, don't have, you know, too much effort, get into a queue with a particular utility, your load's a megawatt, now you want to have two megawatts. This is an easy, cheap, uh, an efficient uh, solution. Electric ver vertical takeoff and landing, that's a little bit more long term. We've been, uh, we've been asked a lot there, but uh, I think they're probably a year or two away uh, from actually issuing any kind of uh, purchase orders to us. These are the four platforms that we, uh, that we offer it. Skid-based, truck-based, trailer-based, and pod-based. Uh, we've never done a pod-based before. Uh, that's, uh, we've never had that requirement. I'd say that the 95% of all the applications have been either skid or trailer mounted type units that the user has, uh, has asked for. Then I went through this concept was June, 2021. First prototype was the truck based unit, what we call the goat. 
November of 2021 and launched at the same time. First order was January, and that's the trailer-based unit that went to a casino in the Midwest, and we really have not looked back since then. Again, um, again, things that you're all familiar with, uh, everybody is trying to increase their resilience. Everybody's trying to, you know, be commercially intelligent about it. Everybody is trying to be, uh, to lower their carbon footprint. Both are products. The, the, the mobile charging is obvious, but the e-block product, again, it's a product that is only, I shouldn't say only, but we shine when there is more than one power source. So there's a user that's decided that just getting electricity from the grid is not enough or it doesn't service them or it's not green enough or it's, it's all the reasons above um, and, and therefore they have more than one source. The e-block power source, theoretically, the way it was done before is that the user would have to buy a transfer switch maybe from one manufacturer, but a transfer switch, the circuit protective system, program the control separately and allocate a tremendous amount of space either indoors or outdoors to do this. What eBlock is, is the transfer switch, the circuit protection, the controls all integrated into one compact, slick, unit, skid based, outdoor only. Nobody has to do anything, it drops in. Um, completely programmed according to the uh, sequence of operations that the user wants. Okay, there we go. That's a, uh, that's a view of an e-block unit that was built in our facility in Los Angeles uh, before it ships out. Uh, you see there's a tritium charger there. For this particular user, um, they're using, we're actually using two additional power sources. So they're going to have a grid connection. They have a natural gas engine that they're using for peak shaving. And they have a battery system, an energy storage system, which happens to be a battery system that they're using for what we call now power skimming, meaning the, the, uh, the need is not enough to exercise their generator to turn it on and then power it down. So they're going to use the battery system as almost a buffer. Uh, for that, of course, if the parameters are correct, then they're going to have to, uh, the, the control system is going to turn on the generator as well. So there we're basically operating three uh, power sources, the grid, the generate, the gas generators in their case, and the battery system. Just some of the companies that we're dealing with, these are either the users or the ones actually issuing uh, the POs um, in relation to the work that we're doing. So you see Chick-fil-A, you can figure out how what they're doing. We just did a pilot for them. Abbey is for, uh, is for one of their campuses. Matson is a large shipping company that's in their, uh, that's for their terminal in Hawaii. Um, Airbus for their facility in Birmingham, Alabama. Again, just to see where, what the addressable market is, what's going on, who's pushing for charging. Uh, charging is a big driver uh, for a lot of the applications with, that we do. All of a sudden, the user sees that whatever load, whatever their load requirements were yesterday, they've increased. Uh, in order to handle that increase, there are different ways of going about it. Um, asking the utility for a power upgrade adding additional uh, additional power sources yourself. Is that, is that more expensive up front? Yes. Does it give you a chance to lower your carbon footprint, to make money over the long term? In some cases, I mean, again, that depends on the integrator and what the user wants to do. Um, but that's where we, uh, that's, the, that's the dynamic that we play in. Okay, this is an example of the uh, one of the units that went to the large retailer, um, which we've all completed. We've completed them all uh, most in 2022. A few uh, dripped into the first quarter of 2023, but we don't have any left. Uh, you can see um, those are the two big generators that they've gotten, 400 kW type generators. Our equipment uh, is uh, is sequencing and controlling and protecting 
all the power between the utility, the store, uh, and the generators. That's kind of uh, kind of what happened to the uh, the growth of the backlog until you know we kind of hit our stride both with eBlock and eBoost. Um, the first big we had smaller adoptions, but the largest adoption that we had not anymore to date, but at the time, December of 2021 was the 12 million dollar that we order that we announced. There's nothing like you know success to get success. Uh, not only has that retailer, of course, targeted many, many, many more stores over the next several years to do this, uh, to do the same operation, but there are many other uh, customers. Some we announced, some that we don't. Uh, the two biggest industries uh, that seem to have come alive for this product in the last six months are both the water utility market, which I wouldn't have foreseen at all, um, and the data center market. So the data center market is trying to become more clever and always has been, but more clever about their power usage. Uh, they're going to natural gas engines and away from diesel for the first time really in forever uh, on any kind of basis. And that gives us an opportunity uh, to, uh, to help uh, and to be part of the solution with the e-block product. Uh, the water utilities, it's different. The water utilities are now coming late to the game um, from a resilience uh, and the peak shaving point of view, they don't want to ever be, uh, nobody wants to have no water being pumped uh, to their home or business. Um, and that is presented, we, we're in the middle of the first water project that we've ever done for the California Department of Water Resources, uh, the first half of this year. And we expect that the water utility market will probably be the single largest market for us over the next several years, given what the backlog's comprised of and the, uh, and the uh, activity that we see uh, for, the, for the product. Okay, we're, we have uh, zero debt. Zero means zero. We don't even have a copy release, anything like that. So we paid off everything in uh, three, three and a half years ago when we sold the transformer business. We have uh, right now, or as, uh, or as of December 31st, 2022, $10.3 million in cash, uh, $14 million in net operating losses uh, to hopefully continue to shelter uh, more profit, uh, not just the last quarter that we had. Um, we believe to execute 2023, we're more than sufficiently uh, capitalized, um, even from a working capital point of view. That's the executive team. Um, everybody but the CFO, we've all been in the industry in the electrical equipment or component industry for over 25 years, uh, leaving aside the CFO, but uh, myself, Gio, Vince, one more individual whose name isn't here. We sometimes think that uh, Collectively, uh, we've sold, uh, the four of us have sold over a billion dollars of electrical equipment um, over the last 25 years. That's uh, a kind of a recap of the beginning. We think we're in the right place at the right time. These are uh, huge uh, secular tailwinds that we're experiencing more than I would have ever, ever expected. Um, there's stop and starts. There's always projects that get held up and so forth and so on. But in general, uh, the trajectory uh, for both the distributed generation and the electrical charging market is really just, uh, just one way. Uh, balance sheet is strong. We're not looking to do any share sales right now. There's almost 10 million shares, a little less than 10 million shares outstanding. Um, the customer base is strong. Um, they're strong financially and they're strong, uh, not just from a credit worthy point of view, but they're strong in the fact that they're investing a lot of money um, to be able to reduce their own carbon footprints and to be relevant uh, for the next 30 years. Um, we experienced almost 50% growth last year. We expect to experience the same thing this year, 2023. We're at statistical capacity for 2023. We're only dealing with uh, with orders and work at this point for 2024. All right, I think we have enough time for any kind of questions, please. Yeah, 
Yeah, so let's use a you know hypothetical big retailer. Let's say Walmart. Okay, so they're they're they they could go with let's say just a backup engine. So that's how some people do it. Target does it that way. Every store is backed up. That's a great question. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll give it all to you. No, no, you but you're asking all the right things. So let's use Target. No secret, we service all of Target's engines. So you know we know. So Target will it won't back up the whole store. Some because that's too much money. So they initially started, you know, when they first, when retailers started backing up, it was really for emergency. What happens is the lights go out. Unfortunately, people get hurt. People run out. People get hurt. In some cases, people, somebody was trampled to death. That's terrible. So it's really for emergency lights and pathways and whatever it is, safe exit of the building. As people like Walmart and Target got more into refrigerated goods and grocery shopping and so forth, they realized that they have at any given time a million dollars plus, you know, under refrigeration. So they want to save that. Okay. In the case of some other retailers, especially the ones that we're dealing with now, again, let's call it somebody like a Walmart. Um, they, it's not enough anymore. They want, not only do they want the entire store to operate no matter what, everything has to operate because they want to be there for you no matter what. If there's a power failure, they're going to be every, they're going to be the cooling center in the, in West Texas. You know, I, I'm, that's what they want. You're going to come in. There's never, it's never going to be, I, I can't, it's not here. It's nothing. No, we're here to serve you all the time. Um, at the same time, they're also worried about two things. One is the, is, is the price of the electricity. So they want to be able under the right parameters, or again, the customer sets the parameters for how they want these sources to use. You know, if X and there's going to be demand chargers and so forth, we want the generators to kick in for whatever it is that they want until you decide a blah, 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 whatever, whatever sequence they want, okay? They're also getting ready. Let's take a Walmart. You know, in a rural area, Walmart's going to have an average of a thousand parking spots. So they're saying, okay, we want to dedicate, let's say, 20% of them for electric vehicles. However, they're going to do it. They never want to hear that we can't get enough power from the utility to charge. Whatever our business plan is, or whatever our model is for charging. We're going to make people pay. We won't make pay. Whatever it is, we don't want to hear that we don't get it. So in order to take matters into their own hands, so they're putting, in that case, you saw two massive 400 kilowatt natural gas engines. And our product sits in between all of that and actually acts as the traffic cop. Make sure that, the, that, that, that its power is being transferred when they want it to be transferred. Stopped when stopped and do it all in a safe, reliable way and never miss it. That's what it is. Any other questions? Correct. So they, they've designated, I mean, they've designated a thousand stores. I mean, you know, realistically, they really have slotted four to 500 right now. And I mean, if, if the, uh, I don't know, if the past history is any uh, indicator, I, I, it would be very hard for them to do anything more than 50 to 100 a year. They just can't, can't receive. I mean, these are in so many different states, you know, just to receive them, you know, to get with contractors and so forth and so on to get them all done. That's what we're figuring. Yeah. Thousand stores, correct? Yes. Thank you. But that, that's what it is. And I mean, the prices will go up a little bit, but yes, that's what it is. Yes. Okay. Thank you all for joining.